Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're listening to uh, uh, this in a podcast, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we have uh, Matt Smith here today with us in the studio. Hi, How's it going, Gabor? Hi. Good, good. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome mm -hmm. to have Matt in the studio always. Um, today we're going to talk about inspiration with Matt. And, and Matt, you've been painting for a while now, so you're, you're looking at it when I mean, right now with a different eye than, you know, 30 years ago too, you're reflecting backwards too. So what are your, uh, uh, if somebody's sort of new to this, it uh, doesn't have to be a, a young person, I'm just saying new to painting or, or they're stuck in their inspiration right now, they're watching this. How, how, do you, how do you get past when you're a little bit, you know, stuck maybe? Or, well, when you're, yeah. when you're first starting out, obviously everything's exciting. Yeah. Particularly, I'll address this from the standpoint of a landscape painter. Yeah. You're traveling, uh, you're experiencing a lot of new things. It's exciting to be be out there and on the road and on an adventure. Yeah. But uh, as time goes on, you kind of drill down into what what really interests you. Uh, I have a, a, a fun story. Early on, when I was in my late twenties, uh, I was a huge fan of uh, Thomas Moran, Albert Beardstead. Mm -hmm. And painters along those lines, you know, big, dramatic, grandiose scenes. Yeah. And, and I loved the idea of, uh, I lived in the desert at the time, Phoenix area. I wanted to go up and experience the Rockies. Yeah. And I loved it. I got up there and I thought, who doesn't want to live here? Yeah. So I come home, I had this little house and I put it on the market uh, to, to, to sell and move up. I was thinking somewhere up oh, around really? Bozeman. I had a friend up there at the okay. time, Ralph Oberg. So we put the house on the market and couldn't sell it because it was a kind of a depressed market. So. I, I, I doubled down and said, you know what, uh, this is where I live. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really mm -hmm. figure out, <laughs> you know, how to express my opinion yeah. of the Sonoran Desert and the beauty of the Sonoran Desert. I kind of fell in love. I, was, I already loved the area. It wasn't, it wasn't an obvious beauty like the Rocky Mountains or a seascape, mm -hmm. the coast, that kind of thing. But there still was an extraordinary beauty to it. And over the years, just, just the amount of time I spent in the desert, I've connected with it. And I think it's really important for anybody on any level to keep that in, in, in mind. Uh, s celebrate your world uh, rather than somebody else's world. I see that too much when I look through galleries and museums, particularly some of the contemporary artists are painting in the style of this person or that mm -hmm. person or yeah. imitating what somebody else is doing. And they're overlooking their own, uh, their own world and their own experiences, which are so important. So. Uh, if I hit a wall and, and, and lose inspiration, I find one of two things helps. Uh, crack an art history book yeah. <laughs> or go outside okay. and, uh, and paint from direct observation. And that pretty much always fires me up. Even if I end up not painting for the day, just getting out yeah, and following a desert wash and see where it goes yeah. and just observe and, and, uh, and, t and, and absorb what's happening, take it in. And, yeah. and that will uh, transition into future paintings. And I think that's very important. But uh, the key takeaway is to paint your world, paint what you love. Yeah. Uh, even if no, nobody else is responding to it yet, yeah. Uh, very early on, I had several prominent dealers tell me, you're wasting your time painting the desert. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Imagine uh, the guys, Matt Smith, Matt is getting to, <laughs> looking back. But yeah, it's, I'm not saying yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, who was I to question him? I was just but, a kid, you know. Like, maybe. <laughs> and, and I'm looking through uh, old books and magazines trying to find yeah. historical desert painters, yeah. and I'm coming up with about three of them, you know, <laughs> uh, Maynard Dixon yeah. and Gunnar Weedforce and Jimmy Swinerton, uh, yeah. people like that. So. So I was thinking maybe there's something to this, but then I thought, no, I have something to say here and I'm going to say it. Yeah. And to this day, uh, I just absolutely love the desert. Uh, we've, we've had a terrific winter, as you know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we've painted outside together multiple mm -hmm. times. And it's just, uh, that's, that's my happy place yeah. when I get out there. And yeah. But Matt has a saying to, uh, we have these washes in the, in the desert and you call it entryways, right? In, uh, so or, I call them the natural, natural corridors, corridors of the so desert. Yeah. That's where the animals walk. And, yeah. and, uh, and there's a lot of character along those arroyos because, uh, that's where the water is. So you get yeah. the, the old, um, sycamore and cottonwood trees, yeah. beautiful ironwood trees. There's just a lot happening there and yeah. you get these cut banks and, big shapes, dark shapes against lighter shapes. And, yeah. and it just, uh, it, they're, they're fun to design and I never tire of those. I grew up as a kid yeah, you know. walking up and down desert washes, yeah. you know, my little 22 and, yeah. 
and I'm out, you know, just plinking around and exploring, yeah. and, I, and I had a great time. I spent countless hours doing that. I've yeah. walked 5,000 miles and down the desert. You still return to those places, and they change every yep. year because of the, as the monsoons come, right, as, the, as, as it gets washed and, and re sort of configured with boulders. So it's, it's constantly changing, right? They're always watches, new. So They're different. always new. Yeah. Uh, the plant life will grow up and sort of cho choke them out, and then a, a big flood will come through and clear it out. Yeah. And it's on an all new subject. So they're they're all new and they're everywhere and yeah. uh, everything from the small wash. But anyway, that's what excites me, and it goes back to my childhood yeah. and uh, and where I live now, and and that's yeah. where I see so much of the character of the desert. And this is true for everyone in the sense of wherever you are at. I mean, this there's something there. Just to, I've told the story of of, of the time I drove drove out to Missouri, which is where I was born, to, to teach a workshop, and I went through Arkansas on the uh -huh. way, and I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. Yeah, I remember was. you said you were it excited, yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm thinking, why, why aren't paintings of Arkansas hanging on yeah. museum walls everywhere? Yeah. Or southern Illinois in the winter, or, I, I mean, yeah. there's beauty everywhere if you go out and find, look at the, there's a show going on in, in Reno at uh, one of the museums up there, Maynard Dixon right now. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go up and take a look at that, but I'm seeing a lot of the images coming up online of just these big, vast, open yeah. Mojave Desert paintings, and yeah. he saw the beauty of that. Boy, he showed yeah. it to us yeah. just clear as can be. Yeah. A uh, landscape that many people would drive right by and not think much yeah. of. He absolutely celebrated that place, yeah. and and it shows in his work, and uh, and it's inspiring. And it's kind of like with I think a, like a wildlife artist, if it was animals, you know, it's it's just amazing how people hone in on you know you got your big game animals, yeah. which they are beautiful. I'm, I'm not saying they're not, but there's all sorts of other little creatures, right? Yes. So. I, I just haven't. I don't. Sometimes I come across someone like, "Whoa, it's a, it's a mouse." Yeah, it's a beautiful painting of a mouse. You ever you know, see? Like, you ever see the Abbott there painting of the yeah. copperhead and the and the fall leaves? I don't know if I see that oh anymore. man! Yeah. I mean, who who would think okay. that'd be a great painting? Well, but you're right. I mean, there's there's same beauty same from answer. from the grandiose all the way down into the quietest little scene that might be taking place at your foot at your feet while you paint. Yeah. All of a sudden, you look down and the way yeah. the light throws but a Matt shadow. Another, it just, Matt has some great quotes, and I, I always I remember, you know, certain ones definitely always ring in my head. And, and one of them said, "There's nothing more Western than a Western landscape." It was here first. <laughs> you know, it was even here before the cowboys, before the cowboys horses, and the humans possibly, and the yeah. horses were. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, but but, and that and that's that's a good thing to bring up. I mean, yeah. I see a lot of really nice Western paintings, and yeah. and the area where I see. Probably most of the problems with those is in the landscape. Mm -hmm, sure. uh, the artist focuses so much on on, on the horse and rider yeah. and, and maybe the tack and all that. Yeah. And they focus everything on that and they they uh, discount atmospheric perspective yeah. or natural light. Yeah. And so uh, the best Western painters I've seen are those who actually go outdoors and paint from life, yeah. whether it just be a landscape yeah. Or maybe a study of a horse. Yeah. Bill Anton is a Bill good example. Like, yeah, right up there. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, you can't you can't fool everybody all the time. Eventually, you're going to have to go out and and, yeah. and soak that all in. And, and a, a lot of them do. You yeah. Know, same them. thing with animal artists. It's just the same concept. Same thing. thing. And animals are living nature, so you would think. Yeah. You know, it's such a one on one. But uh, Carl Rungus is a is a great yeah. historical example yeah. for that. Uh, all the little field sketches yeah. he did, I've seen hundreds of those. Yeah. I went to the Glenbow and, and mm -hmm. went through their collection and just hundreds of those things. And that, that translates into those yeah. uh, uh, studio paintings in yeah. terms of his understanding, like I say, of atmospheric yeah. perspective and conditions and natural light. And but he was out there living it. Living it. He was camping, mm -hmm. hunting, and, 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 and lived, lived in it. To yeah. See it. So there, there are a lot of drive-by painters out there. Everything's yeah. through, through the side window yeah. of their car or yeah. from uh, the, the pullouts in a na yeah. national park. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've you've got to you've got to go in deeper, yeah. and uh, and that's where the fun is. That's where the enjoyment is. It's yeah. it's kind of. I remember the first time I, I painted outside. It was a miserable experience. Yeah. It, it, I, I completely failed. Yeah. And for the first two years, it was consistent failure. Yeah. But at all my mentors were saying, "Matt, go outside, paint from direct yeah. observation." So I did. Yeah. 
And what, it, 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 worst case scenario is it's a bad day painting outdoors, which is a good day. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're outdoors. Yeah. So, so I spent a lot of time out there uh, doing all that, and I learned so much. It's not about that one painting on that day. It's about years of accumulating this knowledge yeah. and information and, yeah. and observing what's happening firsthand. Yeah. Well, these are good. These are great, great tips. I think for for anyone anywhere doesn't matter where you're at. Well, they sure help me, and I, yeah. I I'm get, getting uh, 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 into my senior years now, <laughs> and I find that all I want to do is go outside and paint. Yeah, it's even now, harder. I, I I enjoy the studio, but yeah. I really love being out on location yeah. painting. Yeah, and uh, that's that's where I yeah love being. Yeah, no, these are great great tips, Matt. So thank you for. Sharing your knowledge. And, sure, and Gabor, thanks for having me again. Them. Sure. Yeah. Good. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now, click it, uh, subscribe, share. Uh, it, it would be great to, to have that uh, for the channel. And um, thank you for listening, watching, and we hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Matt Smith. One of the primary goals of this online course is to give folks the opportunity to study with me for a full year at their convenience, on their own time frame. It's not always easy to block out a week or more time to travel to a distant location for the purpose of studying with an artist of choice. Allowing oneself to study as their schedule permits creates a more relaxed atmosphere, which in turn opens the mind to learning. This is an opportunity I really wish I had in my early years. The course begins with an introductory module covering the basic consideration of tools, equipment, studio arrangement, lighting, the importance of indoor versus outdoor time, photography as a tool, and much more. This first module will set the tone for the remaining modules, which will dive more deeply into the basics of drawing, value, design, and color. In the remaining four modules, I'll discuss why these basics are important, how to identify them, and in return, how to use them not only to analyze your chosen subject, but how to use them to create a blueprint for building your painting. It is so important to train your mind to see and think as an artist rather than someone who just documents what's in front of them. The way to do this is by understanding these fundamentals and applying them to the subject at hand. In other words, see by way of the basics, line, shape, value, etc rather than all the physical components that make up the finished scene, like twigs, pebbles, and leaves. I'll then reinforce these concepts with both unedited visuals, photographs, and finished paintings that support the idea at hand. I'll then complete a demo of a subject that represents the particular fundamental addressed in each module. I'll also include a variety of photographic images for student use. Participants will also have access to me throughout the year by way of a private Facebook group. You'll be able to contact me with questions related to areas of difficulty or whatever you may be working on and want to discuss. This one-on-one -on -one time is where we can really fine-tune areas of interest for you. Thank you and I really hope you can join me.